guys, what's up? This is a special podcast today. It's on location. It's the it's the sitting in the car waiting for laundry podcast. <laughs> so exciting and different, and it's a little weird. I have a few minutes while the laundry is I was gonna say cooking while it's getting washed before I put excuse me before I put them in the dryer. I am in my little small tiny little town at the tiny little laundromat and. Yeah, this is really strange, um, but I wanted to stay consistent and get a podcast out to you, and my husband's home today, so I don't really want to record while he's home, even though he doesn't care, whatever. Um, anyway, this is the Knitspired podcast. I'm Kamiko, and today is Wednesday, January 23rd, I think, yeah, and it is, it has been, I, this is what we do as people, we talk about the weather. I'm sure your weather, it seems like everybody has crazy weather right now, but um the, it has been like hitting below minus 20 minus 25 celsius here it has been so cold and the temperature on my dashboard says two degrees now so it's downright balmy <laughs> um so it's finally warmed up a little bit um and it's really rainy today but that's okay it's kind of cozy it's just i don't really want to go out in the rain just because of my hair <laughs> you know how that goes it'll just curl right up Anyway, so this will probably be a short podcast today, um, but I just wanted to share with you some of the things I've been working on, and it's funny knowing that I'm going to be coming back every week for the podcast, I make sure I work on things for you guys. I want, I want to have some stuff to show you guys, um, so yeah, I think this is episode 24, I'm not sure, I think it is, I don't have any notes in front of me, so yeah. So first, what I've been working on is, um, oh, I'm going to share that last because it kind of has to do with acquisitions. So if you have followed me from the beginning, then you may have remember, you might remember this from one of the first episodes, I don't remember what, but it was completely ripped out and this ball of yarn has been just sitting there, just sitting there for over three years, knowing that... It was going to become this again. I just had to rip it out because I wasn't a very experienced shawl knitter, but I did start this yesterday. So it's basically a rite of passage shawl. It's the Reina shawl. Ooh, and I forget who it's by, but it's a free pattern. There's like cat hair on it and I'm not even with the cats. In fact, there's a cat hair on my screen and I'd, I wanna clean it off, but I'm not gonna do that because that's weird and you can't see it. But yeah, this is the Reina shawl. And it is coming out lovely. It's on a cake of Cascade, I want to say painted yarn, and I think it's a DK, but my friend got this for me, I want to say like seven or eight years ago, a long time ago. She picked it up when she was at the at a, a local yarn store when she was visiting me once, and she got this ball of yarn for me, and I had no idea what to do with it, but it was really special because it was from my friend Kim, and um, I, yeah, I wanted to make it into something special. And now I know it's not going to... Um, make the whole it, there, it's not enough for the entire shawl but I think I'll add some stash yarn to it to finish off the shawl but yeah this is the Reina shawl like I said it's a free pattern it's so fun and it's so easy to knit up um, I started this yesterday morning and it is 9.50 on Wednesday morning now so yeah, I sat and knit a lot yesterday, but I was also up and down doing things too. So I got it. This, this just shows you how easy it is to knit it. Uh, yeah. So I guess it's kind of upside down, but, but that's what it looks like so far. It's all, I don't know if I knit, knit it too tight on two small needles, but I did go up a size because it's a DK weight yarn, but it's super pretty. I do love reds. I'm a big fan of red. I just don't have a lot of red yarn. Excuse me. And there's my progress keeper. It is a little ball of yarn and needles. I might have shown you that before, but I made that. So that's going to be nice. I'm excited. I was excited to show that to you. I kind of made that for you guys so that I would have something to show you. Plus, I have some yarn I can get rid of. Um, also, here's a finished object. I'm off. I'm not like in sections I'm just showing you as I want to show you but these are those socks from my daughter Tatum and I finished them they're just um, a plain plain sock um, on funny feets yarn I think that's the name of it. funny feets with a Z and <clears throat> excuse me they're just your regular like 
I did the fish lips kiss heel because I feel like they fit me better and I know my daughter has um, very narrow feet like mine so they'll fit her and I was gonna keep it a surprise but I showed her a picture of it and she snapchatted me back and had this huge excited expression on her face um, she was really excited she's never gotten socks from me and she lives very far away from me so it's fun to send her little gifts like this and speaking of sending her little gifts I sent her and her boyfriend um, I made hats for them and I sent those to to them and they really liked them so that was that was exciting and I know she'll get a lot of wear out of these and it's funny I've heard people say that when you knit for somebody else which I don't do a lot that you think about that person while you're knitting and it's true the socks I made for my husband I was thinking of him as I knit them thinking about like how he might feel when he received them and when he like how he might feel when he wears them and that a lot of thought and love went into them and the same obviously with these socks for Tatum I was thinking of her um, yeah and it's just it's a really nice feeling I'm not one who knits for other people I usually knit for myself just because it's expensive and the, there's a lot of time that goes into it and I don't feel like people really appreciate it so I don't want to just give it away to anybody um, and nobody knits for me so somebody has to knit for me <laughs> um, but it is such a nice feeling to knit for somebody else and I really love these oh, they're so cute they just remind me of her only because they're for her so I wanted to share with you and show you that I finished those now I also have I finally started my fourth design in the sweet child of mine series and again if you're interested in test knitting or you know somebody that might be let me know you can send me a message all my information is down below I'm most active on Instagram and I actually have two Instagrams now one of them is um, Kamiko MC Knitspired and then the uh, the new one is Sorella Knitco and that is the one that's going to be for my Etsy shop because that is the name of my Etsy shop is Sorella Knitco um, if you don't know already. Unfortunately, I feel bad because I do know there's people following me on both of them and so they're going to see duplicate posts and I'm really sorry about that, but eventually I will um, give the teaser in my personal account and then for the Sorella Knitco, I'll give the actual information about what I'm selling or up to that week or that day or whatever. But um, anyway, these are my last, my fourth and final pattern in the Sweet Child of Mine series and these are for Nadia. I'm not really sure what I'm going to call them because she doesn't really have a nickname that I want to use. She has a family nickname but it's not something that she'd be proud of when she gets older because it's a little embarrassing and her papa calls her that but it's it's just a silly nickname so I don't really want to use that but I was kind of thinking of like Nadia Nugget because sometimes we call her that um, but I don't know. Anyway the Nadia socks. So this is a Richard DeVries yarn and I'm actually doing contrasting cuffs cuffs heels and toes which I've never done before but I at the fiber festival I went to in October I bought some yarns on smaller skeins not they're not quite minis they're a little bit bigger than that but um they're like 85 grams I think so I, I wanted to have something fun to to share so or to use so this is a Richard DeVries yarn and I can't remember everything about it I don't have the ball band with me or anything and this is a cascade yarn also don't have the information about that with me right now but it's a, a little texture pattern and then surprise on the back there is that little braided pattern and Nadia actually kind of picked that out um, because it looked like an Elsa braid and if you have a child um, or any little boys or girls in your life that love the movie Frozen you'll know exactly what I'm talking about she is obsessed with Elsa and the Elsa braid and yeah and I thought it was kind of fitting because this color blue is like an icy blue that is kind of like Elsa kind of like Frozen but yeah so I love this pattern this is gonna be the back of it I love that and it's so easy and then the little split texture ribby pattern it's really pretty I re I'm super happy with it which is good because I did start it out on a different pattern and I did it wasn't working out because I was trying to make it in the round but I only knew the pattern flat it was like a lacy eyelet pattern it just wasn't working so I had to take it out which is fine I want to be happy with it and I'm super happy with these they're like the rest of them um, in the series they're very easy like simple but still like you need to give a little bit of attention to them but they're still and like simple enough where you can do it while you're watching TV or whatever um, 
Yeah. And the, there is a cable. It's a lot of like SKPO slip knit one and then pass the slip stitch over the knit stitch. It's a lot of that to get for both of these. And for this, there is a cable you need, but only one row out of, I want to say like 10 or 12 rows, you need the cable needle, which is awesome because that can be kind of a pain. So there's that. And you'll notice normally I do my socks on magic loop and I was in um, a local yarn store from where I used to live I think last week and I decided hey I'm gonna try some double pointed needles and I really wanted to get carbons I really want to try carbons um, because I knit socks and sometimes the yarn is you know kind of slippery and I've heard that they're great for knitting socks and people talk about them all the time so I, I'm on a quest for carbons but she didn't have them at her store so these are the I want to say that they're the Knitter's Pride Dreams do I have the package here? I'm just gonna check. I might have the package here still. I do. It's the Knitter's Pride, sorry. Knitter's Pride Zing. Ooh, that's backwards. Oh wait, no, I think it's fine. An iPhone. It'll be fine for you. Knitter's Pride Zing and I, they are in two point, oh my goodness, I can't see. Oh, 2.75 millimeter US size two. So that's my, pretty much my go-to. And this is a 64 stitch count. I really like these needles. I'm gonna show them to you. I figured I would try them to try something different. All right, let's not lose our brand new needles. So if you haven't seen Zings, which you probably have, because I'm always late to the party. Um, does that change it? It might change it, I don't know. But these are nice because they're slippery, but not too slippery. And this is how she sold them to me. And I think I've tried these at a knitter's, um, like a fiber festival once before. Um, and they have, they're pointy on the ends, but they're, they're also, wow, I can't think of the word right now. Sorry, that's blowing out. They're also like dull, not dull. It's flat. It's a flat tip blunt I guess but they're pointy enough to get through the yarn and be comfortable and they're metal needles which I love but they are not slippery they're great for sock knitting because especially when you're cabling you don't want those needles that are on hold to fall off the needle to fall off the, the double pointed needle while you're cabling and they don't I haven't had any problems with it and this is a pretty soft like slick not a slick yarn but a, um, it's not like patterns um, where it's like a rough, a, a rougher yarn, but and there's my messy ball as always. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend Knitter's Pride, ah, Knitter's Pride Zing. And they were only $9 Canadian dollars, so that's pretty good for me. Um, I thought that was a good price. But yeah, I would really like to find some carbons, but down the road, who knows. And actually, when I was at that yarn store, I was so proud of myself um, because right before we had left to go there, to go, we had to go out of town where we used to live um, for work. Right before we went there, I had looked at my stash of yarn and I was like, oh my goodness, I have so much yarn to get through. And I was like, do not buy yarn, do not buy yarn. And, you know, I did go into the shop knowing I wanted needles and I also wanted a gleaner. I got a gleaner on the go. That thing's awesome. If you don't have a gleaner and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I think it's G-L-E-E-N-E-R. And it basically takes any pilling off garments or anything that's fabric. And that thing's awesome. I have this sweater that is like a, I think it's lamb's wool. I did not knit it. And it was just, I stopped liking it because it was so pilly and disgusting and I used the gleaner on it and oh my goodness it was so cool and the gleaner on the go the one I got was only $13 and the bigger one is only $20 so it's totally worth it um, especially if you have a lot of knits and it's good for fine knits too like finer fabrics but anyway so I went into the yarn store and I bought only the gleaner and only the needles I did look around at yarn but I was like you know I have yarns like this I have so much yarn at home I don't need any more I exercised massive self-control so yeah um and that is it as far as stuff I've been working on as far as knitting because for, since the last episode I finished up my daughter's socks that I showed you I started the Raina shawl I started a new pattern and 
I feel like I'm a fast knitter, but I also have to get up and down a lot. I can't just sit all day just because I'm like super, I get very distracted and I, I can't just sit. I don't like to just sit. So, and I have things I have to do around the house. So I don't get a lot of time to knit, even though I do. I don't know. That's just how it is. There's other, other things to do. And, um, I feel bad cause I'm like on half of the screen and that you can see the rest of my car in the back of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> car, car podcasting. It's a new thing. So that is it. Like I said, but I did want to share with you my little babies that I've, I've put out into the world. I did open my Etsy shop. It's Sorella Knit Co. Um, I'm so excited about it. I really appreciate all the support people have given me. Um, you know, I'm not like some overnight success because people don't know me. I'm not like one of the famous celebrity podcasters or dyers or whatever. Um, okay, this might get weird because somebody did just pull up on the street behind me and it looks like they're coming into the parking lot. Never mind, you gotta love a small town. Nobody's here. So I, yeah, I just want to share some of my babies with you. It is really, they are like babies because I put them out, my yarn out into the world. And I'm talking about my hand dyed yarn. And I just, I want, I think they're beautiful and I want everybody else to accept them. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the first one I, I, I dyed up um, and I did sell one of these. So to my purchaser, thank you so much. That was so shocking and exciting. I was like, oh my goodness. And it was like minutes after I had posted it too. So thank you. This is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and it's gonna be blown out. Although it's gonna give you a better true to color look because I am in overcast light. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And I'm so happy that I, I could do a whole dye lot and they all look the same with a little variation, but it's all the same. And I wrote down all my procedures and formulas and how I did it, everything. And I'm so happy with it. I love it. I love it. I want to steal it so bad and knit something up with them. I'll dye them again. I'll dye this a lot again so I can use it and then I can have pattern, I mean, samples to show people. So that's my first one. The second one I did is a one of a kind because it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, but it came out amazing. And it's a little messed up because I brought it in my bag this morning. Like who buy, who brings their dyed yarn in, a, in the car to do the laundry? this guy this is I ended up calling it number one crush and yes you'll notice I love music and it Lucy in the sky with diamonds Beatles number one crush garbage and I showed this to my sister we actually saw garbage many hundreds of years ago at a concert once um, at a club and like one of those small clubs and she, when she, I told her the name of this she was like that's awesome that looks exactly like what I, I would imagine. She's like, you can, you can see, you can hear music and turn it into colors. She thought that was cool. Anyway, I love it. I wish I could repeat it. I could try, but I love it. The, the third one is my tonal, which my husband likes better. And it is called, oh my goodness. It is called Hippocras. It's like a mulled wine. That's kind of what that means is a mulled wine, but I wanted a better name. So Hippocras. And this has little breaks of color, like splotches of bright colors on it, which I love. And this came out exactly like I planned. I love it. So there's those, there's some of that in the shop. And then this one, I'm well aware, this is called Flower Child. And it was actually supposed to be something different, but it didn't, it, it wasn't, it came out exactly the way I wanted it to, but I was like, no, that doesn't really match it. So it's blown out. Sorry. That's a little better. Flower Child. I freaking love this one. Like I, it's almost like save the best for last, but I love all of them. But this is Flower Child. I love that right there. What is that? I'm well aware that somebody else recently released a colorway, a new colorway called Flower Child. And I was devastated, just absolutely devastated. And it's not similar to this, but it has the same feel. I won't say it's similar because she's very experienced in yarn dyeing. I did not copy her. I promise I did not copy her. I didn't put this out 
on um, Instagram or Etsy before she did, so it looks like I'm copying her, but like really, who would come up with the name Flower Child? So I promise if you come across another Flower Child colorway, I did not copy her. This was well in the work. Well, it was already done and named before, before I saw her post. So I promise I didn't copy it. I don't want to be a copier. <laughs> and I love this one too. So those four colorways are in the shop and they're for sale and I'm working on more this week. So exciting. Um, I'm super, just super excited about it. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it and that's that. So I don't really have too much more to say, although I did want to touch on Gilmore Girls. If you, if you follow me, you know that I've been binge watching the entire season, which I never watched before. And now I finished it the other night, tears in my eyes, heavy heart. It was just so touching. They did such a good job and anything bad I said about them, it wasn't meant to be bad. It was, it was such a great show. It was so cute and I can totally understand why everybody watches it. Well, not everybody. And they want to watch it over and over again. I, I was doubtful at first, and I don't, I'm not one to really, really stay on trends, even though that's kind of an old show. But I was curious about it. The knitters of the podcast world, they piqued my curiosity and I checked it out and it was really good. It was really good. I'll definitely watch it again. Um, it's great. I love knitting in front of it at night. <laughs> um, but then I did watch the Gilmore Girls Year in the Life, year, A Year in the Life, the new, the reboot that they did. And I'm hoping they do it again or they do a second season because I watched all four the last couple nights and I think I finished it last night. Oh my goodness. I was like, the last episode just had me <sighs> so like touched. I, I don't know. You know how it is. They, they want to wrap it up and evoke a lot of feelings. So yeah, it got all the feels for me. <laughs> we'll just say that. And that was really awesome. And then I went on to catch up on Grey's Anatomy, the latest episode, because they just started again for the season. And then catch up on this is us because I haven't watched it for a while and I'm catching up from like October talk about the feels every single episode you like you think it's like not even a sad touching episode and at the end you're like oh my goodness so yeah this is us finished that up oh and speaking of the Gilmore of Gilmore girls um can I just say I'm not gonna make give any spoilers because I know people might not have watched it or they didn't they don't get into it until well after it's been released but they were brilliant they had some ironic guest stars um, <clears throat> from shows that maybe La what's her face Laura, uh, Lauren Graham has been in before <laughs> it was really cool the way they did that and um, some of the 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 nods to other shows that they gave were kind of cool too and then they did this really cool dance or a little number um yeah i don't want to give too much away at the in the in the last episode it was a nod to the beatles i was like oh that's awesome because if you don't know i'm a huge beatles fan but i'm gonna have to wrap this up because my um laundry is almost done and i can't believe nobody has parked next to me while I've been talking, thankfully, because I didn't really want to talk to them, make it look like I'm recording a video, although they'd probably think I'm just talking to somebody on the phone. I don't know. But I think that is it. So um, I just really want to thank you for spending a few minutes with me and um, yeah, just thank you for everything. And new viewers, returning viewers, thanks for spending time with me and I will see you next week. All right. Bye. I just wanted to share one more thing. I'm all weird now. Um, I, this just reminded me of it because I just switched the laundry over to dry and I took all my hand knit socks because I wear them all the time now, especially with it, with it being winter and they look really cute when they're poking out the top of your boots and you can see them. But anyway, a few weeks ago, probably like a month and a half ago, I came to the laundromat to wash my clothes and when I got home and separated and put everything away, two of my socks didn't have matches and I was like hmm I didn't realize it until like halfway through the week and then when I went to do laundry again I was like I really don't know where they are I can't find them and I'm like there's no way I left them behind because I always look to see if I dropped anything or check the machines and the the washer and the dryer to make sure nothing's left behind because you know how that happens sometimes I got to the laundromat put my clothes on to wash and um 
I looked over in the corner where there's like a lot of white clothes piled up that people must leave behind. Guess what was there? My two socks. I, I was so sad, like I couldn't believe I did that. And I quickly grabbed them and then threw them in the wash again because I didn't know who touched them. <laughs> I'm weird like that, but yeah, like what is up with that? And I'm only saying that because I know one of my socks that I just took out, there's my pile of socks. <laughs> um, one of my socks that just took out didn't have a match, but I'm pretty sure it's at home because um, I checked everything, but I'm pretty sure it's at home because I forgot to look for it anyway this morning because I put it the one in the hamper and then I didn't have the other one. Um, but anyway, I thought that would be a fun little story to tell. It was awful. Don't leave your hand knit socks at a local laundromat if you have to bring your clothes out. Oh my gosh, how awful would that be? All right.